Yes guys and welcome to another video. So today we have of course got the review of the excellent three points that Sunderland did get yesterday away from home at the Bet365 against Stoke. A very, very difficult place to go. It was a very, very difficult game and we managed to get away with all three points. So we're going to be discussing the match review in this video and also at the end we're going to talk about a little bit of transfer rumours. I'm starting to mess videos together now when there's quite a bit going on at the same time rather than me doing two separate videos at a time. So it's quite good. I've just managed to get everything out in one video. It's easier to digest for you guys as well for those of you who need updates but we're getting to the match review come on we got a really good three points yesterday against Stoke now getting into the game you know I did predict a win a 2-1 win so I think I think I've got it's like everyone right bar one I think um, I think anyway I've got that right I'm not too sure I can't remember now but um, I'm pretty sure not of course the exact goal uh, or at least the exact scoreline but the either win loss draw I'm pretty sure I've got everyone right bar one which was the Coventry game I think, or was it the commentary? I can't, I can't remember now. Either way, it, oh no, it was Bristol City, wasn't it? Bristol City. Yeah, Bristol City was the one that I got wrong, I think. Yeah, Bristol City was the one I got wrong, and everyone else I've, I've got correct, I think, anyway, yeah. I keep saying I think because I'm not sure. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we did manage to get away with a brilliant 1-0 win. But getting into the game, we did have Pato in goal. We had the uh, the sort of back three of Sirkin, Danny Bart, and, uh, and Luke Conayan. And then we had Gooch on one side. Clark on the other. Then in the middle, we did have Embleton and Metete. Then we had Pritchard in behind, of course, Sims and Stewart as well. Now, getting into the game, first half, I think we really, really struggled to keep up with them. They shown their class. They had a lot of good players on show. Um, you know, Delap in particular was just joined from Manchester City. Um, he looked absolutely excellent. He was absolutely bossing Luke O'Neill. He was throwing him around like a rag doll at times. You know, I, I say that, but I mean, you know, he was a lot stronger than him. Luke O'Neill, you know, every time they were putting balls over the top, he, he was losing him for pay. So, you know, it, it, Luke O'Neill had started diving just to try and stop the play and the ref wasn't having any of it. And he was just bossing him. They were making plenty of chances. Um, and, and, you know, to be fair, uh, we, I think we defended relatively well. I think there, were, there was at times where we were, we were a bit... You know, getting him behind a couple of times a bit too easily for my liking. But Dennis Serkin and Danny Bart in particular for me were absolutely outstanding. Dennis Serkin, you know, he has improved stupidly, you know, over over the, the course of the season so far. You know, he had a few dodgy times last season. And people were questioning whether he'd be good enough. And he was absolutely excellent. He has been, you know, he's really moulded himself into that sort of left centre-back role in a back three. You know, I prefer him as a, as a left back or a left wing back. But he does, he drives up the pitch. There's times where, you know, we will be under the cosh and that's going to happen, you know, this season. This is what I liked about the performance, um, even in the first half, because it's something we haven't really seen too often, you know, particularly when we're in League One, where we generally dominate possession. You know, half the time we had 60, 70% possession, but we could still lose games. We could still, you know, switch off at the back. But what we've had to do, particularly in that first half, is have an absolute smashing grab, show our character, show our resilience, and, you know, defend for our lives. But we know we've got that threat up top. So every, there was times where, you know, we would break forward and get on the break. We arguably should have punished them even more. But they did dominate in terms of, you know, the amount of possession they had in our in our third um, without creating, you know, a colossal amount of sort of clear-cut chances. A lot of nearly moments, saves and efforts that they arguably should have done a lot better with. Some unfortunate moments for them, which, of course, I'm not going to complain about. So we, we, we literally had to just sit back and absorb a lot of pressure uh, of some free kicks as well, set pieces that um, it was either simple for Pato to make or they go wide. So they had a plethora of opportunities. They put a lot of hard work in. Then in the dying moments of that first half, Clock picks it up on that right-hand side, facing his goal. And it, rather than just sort of hoofing out of play or just hoofing up the field, he cuts inside and no one expects him to do that. And he drifts and he drifts and he drifts and no one's going for him. Then he puts an inch-perfect ball over the top for Ross Stewart. And this is what I keep saying. I keep saying that we could have games where you know, we're under the cosh, the opposition are throwing the kitchen sink at us, but we always have that threat now. It's not like Stewart is just up there isolated. You've got Sims and Stewart, who are such nightmares to play against. How we've got two players of that kind of ilk, I, am, I don't know. We are so, so fortunate. Because without them two, we wouldn't have had anything yesterday. But anyway, the ball goes over the top by clock. Inch perfect. It looks like he's drifting away from goal. Bursic, the stoke keeper, arguably should have done a lot better. But he's hit it from right to left. Keeper gets a touch and it almost goes straight through him. And it goes into the bottom left-hand corner. And it just sends the Southern fans absolutely mental. 
Second half comes out. We make some changes because the referee, he was so trigger happy with his cards. It was ridiculous. You know, every time anyone would breathe on each other, it, you know, he it, it was, it, it was giving frigging bookings. And, you know, half our team were booked by the time it came to half time. So, Matete comes off. Oh, nine comes off as well. You know, Evans, who was on the bench, uh, uh, he mustn't have been fully match fit from his... From his, uh, from his injury to start the game. So he comes on and he gave us such a calming presence. Baylor Wright came on and did a job as well. He got himself booked as well, which was ridiculous because they were breaking down the left-hand side. The lad takes a touch away from Bailey Wright and it was going to go out of play for a throw-in anyway and he gets a booking for it as if he would have been like clear through it. It was ridiculous. It was, there was barely any contact in it anyway. It, was, it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't cynical. The referee was just, he was just a dick. But, you know, I'm not going to say it. Uh, this is the thing with referees. Half the time when we're losing games and I'm complaining about referees, everyone says, oh, you just sour because you lost A, B and C and all this kind of stuff. But I still complain about them when we frigging win because of that frigging shit. But yeah, so half our team were booked. We made changes. Evans gives that calming presence. And it's mad to see that, you know, I've, you know, last season, particularly the first half of the season, I almost was accused of hating Evans because I just didn't see what he brought to the side. But then when you bring him out and they put him back in, that's when you really do get to see it. Because we didn't have that calming presence. We, we did look threatening going forward in the first half. But because we didn't have that calming presence in the middle, we didn't manage to keep hold of it in the middle. We are allowing them possession in the middle. And we didn't get hold of the ball. We didn't maintain possession very well. Evans gave us that calming presence. And we started to dominate the second half. And arguably, we should have absolutely run away with it in that second half with the chances we made. There was times where we intercept. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Almost. And it just slid through to Corey Evans himself. And he's pulled it back to, to Sims. And it hasn't quite worked out. But I think if, if it was Clark who picked up the ball where Evans were, on the left-hand side of the box. He would have had a bit more pace, a bit more acceleration. He would have gone for goal himself, but he slowed the play down a little bit. But we did have so many chances where they would make mistakes and were pretty much clear through. Even towards the latter stages of the game, Ross Stewart, one on one the keeper, takes him on, but his touch is a bit too, a bit too, uh, a bit too hard, a bit, a bit too much strength on the touch. Takes him away from the keeper, pulls it back to open up the angle, and he's hit it wide a goal. It should have been it. We had plenty of chances that should have hit the back of the net. Embleton as well, so have some great work on the, on the left-hand side. It's pulled back to Emerson, pulled point blank range. That's literally 80% of the goal the right outside to go for anywhere, and he's spooned it and it's gone way wide. So then when that when that you know the, the ball comes up for five minutes, I'm thinking, here we go, Sunderland are gonna do a Sunderland. But they didn't. They held on, they did excellently well. You know, um Dwight Gale come on. He saw a lot of people on Twitter saying, you know, you know, a lot of mags saying, Oh, Agent Gale is gonna do it today. No, he didn't. He, uh, <laughs> he come on, and to be fair, he had that one very, very good chance, and it was just a ball pumped over the top, hopeful ball. Manages to split both Danny Barr and Bailey Wright. The ball is bobbling one on one with Pato, and he's tried to kind of flick it past Pato into that top right hand corner. It's gone just wide, luckily for us. But other than that, they did not have very much in that second half. I feel like we more than deserved it. You know, like I say, in the, maybe on the balance of things, you know, first half, yes, they did dominate. Um, but second half, we did, and we argued we created more chances than they did in the first, if that makes sense, or at least more clear-cut chances. So I think we 100% deserved it. And again, it shows the character that this team have. You know, that we could argue that a lot of these teams around this league, they might have a bit of better quality or a bit more experience in the championship. But my God, they do not have the same togetherness as we do. They don't. Because sometimes the togetherness and the click and the gel that you have within a side can do a lot more than talent, if that makes sense. And I 100% believe that. These lads are together. It is really like a brotherhood at the minute there. And, and I'm loving seeing that. And you can see, you know, at the end of the game, the scenes when they're going to clap the fans and how happy the players are with themselves. This is a team to be proud of at the minute. So soak it up, Sunderland fans, because for a long time we've had a load of players that are here to pick up a paycheck. These lads clearly know what it means. It took us to go down to League One for some players to come back and realise how, uh, how this club um, uh, or how amazing this club can be if you love it but just as much as the fans love you, if that makes sense. you know. And, and this, we're starting to get that kind of side now, and I'm absolutely loving it. Players who want to play for Sunderland, and who wouldn't, you would think. But we've just had a load of absolute charlatans rinse us over the years. And now we've got a team to be proud of. And uh, I just hope we get backed even more. So, um, you know, at least Alex Hill gets backed in more to add more quality to this at the moment. Because a few injuries and we could be screwed. But with the togetherness and what we've got at the minute is amazing. So an absolutely amazing, insane 1-0 win. Uh, a great, great three points. It's another three points on the road as well. I just wish we can get the three points at home to kind of get that out of the way as well. But next weekend, of course, we do play Norwich, which is going to be incredibly difficult. I would have gone to the game myself, unfortunately, but of course it did get moved on uh, to Sky Sports at half 12. I finished work at 10 o'clock in the morning that morning. So I won't be able to go to the game because I won't be able to get there in time. But I'm praying to God that I do finish at 10 o'clock in the morning so then I can do my first live stream of 
the season. I know I said it the other week that I might be able to do one. This one is looking highly likely that I will be able to do a live stream for the Norwich game. At least I hope to God I can because I haven't done a live stream for a while and you guys seem to love it and I really enjoy them as well. So next weekend, hopefully I'll be able to bring in the first live stream of the season and what a game to do it with as well. You know, against a team like Norwich, that'd be amazing, particularly if we win. You know that this is going there, you know, all the shirts that we try on throughout the game to bring us luck. This will be getting absolutely beaten the shit out of if we do manage to score. So, you know, you don't want to miss that kind of stuff if you can't make it to the game. Then watch me go mental online. But, um, yeah, but in terms of transfer news, you know, late last night it was revealed by um, a couple of Northwest journalists. Pretty much saying that um, Paul, um, Paul Van Heck, who um, he was on loan last season at... Blackburn from Brighton, I think it is. Um, and he was their player of the season last season. I think 21, 22 years of age. Centre-back. Um, really old-school defender. Decent with his feet. But, you know, again, it's another one of those. It's a big brick shit house. It's a young lad. Whether it would be on a permanent or not, I don't know. But there's a lot of fingers being pointed towards the acquisition of this player. And I've seen Blackburn fans saying, you know, it's far too good for Sunderland. And when I read into the conversation, it's not that them saying that... He's good enough for them. They're saying that he's too good for them as well. That, that he is that good of a player. So it just shows. You know, there's a lot of players we're linked with at the minute. You know, we've had uh, we've got uh, Bennett in the minute. We've been linked with we had Diallo. We've been linked with um, amongst others as well. Sasako. You know, and I, I, a lot of people said, you know, if we're going to go for Van Heck, I'd rather go for him than Sasako. I feel like he is, of course, he's done a full season in the championship with Blackman. He's got the experience and quality. But I think even before Ballard got injured, we needed another centre back anyway. I felt like that was absolutely the case. So, um, so yeah. So that is the transfer news at the moment. Paul Van Heck, what do you think about that? What the heck do you think about that? <laughs> but that is everything, guys. The review, an excellent three points, and a little bit of transfer news as well. So, uh, if you haven't enjoyed, hit the like button for me and subscribe for me if you haven't already. But for now, take care and stay jamming. <laughs>